Chandler behind Mullins. And he's going to throw it. Mullins, plenty of time. Rolls out. Throws it back across his body. It's caught by Addison for a touchdown. What in the world was Nick Mullins doing? And how did Addison get it done? Jason, you still with me? I am with you. That was an unbelievable play. I wanted to hear the silence of this crowd for a second that were just going absolutely insane. As Mullins is, ro is rolling out to his right, I'm saying throw the ball away. Yeah. Nobody's open. Live to see another down. He throws it up. Jordan Addison walks away with the catch right there. Look at this. They have everybody covered. Mullins drops back. Jefferson's covered. Addison is covered right there by Pratt. He's rolling out buying time. Oh. It gives his guy a chance, and he makes the play. The PAT is good. And the Vikings have reclaimed a seven-point lead. And for Mullins, who's been picked off twice and then had another by Pratt, wiped off the board, on first and goal at the one, decides to throw it back across his body. Not only does he decide to throw it back across his body, Kevin O'Connell decides to throw the ball. You just said it at the goal line. Ty Chandler running his butt off this drive, and they go to the pass, and it works. And that's one of the plays we said earlier. He threw one to Addison as he was falling it down, as he does this time again. And the ball's in the air. You're like, no, 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 no. Oh, good throw, good throw. <laughs> Keep throwing it that way, Nick Mullins. One heck of a play. When you make the plays, you congratulate him. When it doesn't, you call it hero ball. But that's a good ball. And, hey, they come away with it. His wife is loving it as well. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, but people are going to wonder about the play call, the execution. But Jordan Addison, the first-round pick, now has nine touchdown catches of the year, most by any rookie in the NFL this season. So, Jake Browning, you're up. Low liner out of the end zone. Well, Justin Jefferson, the big name back in the receiving core, but what about the first round pick? And that's one thing that a Justin Jefferson being back in the lineup can do. It opens up windows for everybody else. We saw Hawkinson make some third down plays, and we've seen Jordan Addison change this game with some of the catches that he's made. Third down, coming up with that first touchdown, and then right here going up and grabbing the ball with all hands Two touchdowns on the day, over 100 yards. A big day for the rookie out of USC. Packing that stat line, and now it's up to Browning, who starts off this drive with a first down catch by Tanner Hudson. Quick reminder, part of a huge day on the network. Saturday showdown triple header continues with a stop in Indianapolis as the 7-6 Steelers and the 7-6 Colts do battle. And then the nightcap, the Broncos also at 7-6 in the thick of the AFC playoff chase take on the leaders of the NFC North, the Detroit Lions. Of course, the Lions will be at Minnesota next week. And the Vikings, if they win out, will be division champs. Browning, pressured on first down, rolls, dumps it down to Mixon. Turf Monster got him, but a short gain on the play up to the 41. Everybody covered up deep down the field. And you're going to see Jake Brown right here. This is a good job. Look at Joe Mixon on Josh Metellus. Pick up the blitzing guy right there. Browning rolling out, able to check it down. Good decision by him of picking up some yards when everybody down the field is covered. So for the Bengals, one of a half dozen teams at 7-6 and six in the heart of the playoff chase. Once again, winless in the division. 3-6 and six in conference. The tiebreakers at this point aren't going their way. A must win this afternoon on NFL Network. Browning swings it out to Boyd. He's going to get the first down and get into Minnesota territory. And a little John with Byron Murphy on top of it. Vikings were coming with pressure right there as they had everybody at the line of scrimmage. Which we've seen play after play right there. Leave Tyler Boyd un. un nobody guarding him right there. And now we see Jamar Chase back on the sideline again. Steve Weish, what do you have? Yeah, Jamar Chase is over here. He's We can't tell exactly what's wrong with him. He was doubled over. We saw it happen in the last possession, too. But uh, this looks like some, something might be happening here again. We have got no medical report, though, guys. All right, so with just under two minutes 
two and a half minutes to go. The Bengals will put it on the ground. It'll be Chase Brown for a few. And the Bengals in no rush. So it looks like they're going to take it down to the two-minute warning. They still have three timeouts. So still plenty of time. Bengals on the move. Down seven with their season on the line at the two-minute warning. Way to kick off triple header action here on NFL Network. Two minutes to go. Bengals down seven with the ball. And coming up after the game, stick around for NFL Game Day kickoff presented by FanDuel. Andrew Siciliano, Steve Smith Sr., and Gerald McCoy. They'll discuss the playoff fallout from this game. Get you all set for the kickoff of the Steelers and Colts. And while we were away, bad news for the Bengals. Jamar Chase off to the locker room. So with their season on the line, and with the ball at the 46, they're charging forward without their biggest offensive threat. Browning hits Higgins down inside the 35. You just said it, without their biggest offensive threat, no, no Jamar Chase, go to T. Higgins. He's running that inside route. And for this Vikings defense, you got to look at it as well and say, hey, I'm not going to allow T. Higgins to be the one to win this game for the Cincinnati Bengals, especially with Jamar Chase out of the game. Bengals still have all three timeouts on this drive as well. 90 seconds to go here in Cincinnati. Browning swings it out quickly. That's Jones on the catch. Clock still moving for a gain of seven. For the Bengals right now, with a minute and 16 to go, you don't want to start calling your timeouts. Continue to let this clock run. You want to be. You want to put seven points on the board with possibly no time left to even give the ball back to the Vikings. Then you can decide whether to kick that extra point or go for two. Minute to go in Cincinnati. Blitz. Browning throws it up and out of bounds. It was in the direction of T. Higgins. So now third and three. Harrison Smith was applying the pressure there. Third and three, Brian Flores is an aggressive play caller. He shows that all throughout. When it gets down to moments like this where the game's on the line, I expect him to come with pressure. I expect to see everybody at the line of scrimmage and do what they've done all season long. For the Bengals, when they see that look, do they go to a screen, which we've seen many times today, or do they look for a one-on-one -on -one possibly with T. Higgins on the outside? That's Travion Williams in the backfield on third and three. Browning looking left, dumps it out to Andre Yosibosh, who makes his first catch of the day, gets a first down, and gets out of bounds. Smart kid, he's a Princeton Tiger. Princeton Tiger, a guy goes out of the game like Jamar Chase, someone has to step up. Yoshivash comes in, takes the check down, knows exactly where the first down marker is, and is able to get up the field and pick it up. Flores showed the pressure, but everybody got out, and they moved to zone on this situation. For the Vikings, you just have to keep them out the end zone. You see where the time's at. You got 50 seconds to go. You just have to keep them deep to short and keep them from putting it in the end zone. Joe Mixon back in the game. Browning has it tipped and knocked away. It was Harrison Smith on the blitz again. You saw Harrison Smith. He was angry at himself. That would have been one heck of a play if he was able to corral that ball after knocking it up in the air. Coming with the pressure, and then Ivan Pace getting out on the middle, and they're trying again to go to the quick pass to Tyler Boyd and match that pressure of where it's coming from. For Zach Taylor right now, have to find a way when they bring the pressure, try to max protect it. Allow Browning a little bit of time to try to find a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside against some of these guys in the secondary. 48 seconds to go. It's second and 10 with three receivers to the right. Browning looking. Pressure throws it deep. And the ball is caught by T. Higgins at the one-yard line. And it's actually called a touchdown. Somehow, Higgins got it across the line. Now we'll have to give that one a look. The Browning Burrow box is going nuts. Browning right there, feels the pressure, throws it up. T. Higgins again on the Caleb Evans, goes up, makes the catch two feet down. It's a completion, reaches the ball. Wow. The nylon and goes over top of it, Chris. I think that is a touchdown. This is the second time he's thrown it up, and T. Higgins has reached up. This time he holds on to it. I don't know, though. It's close. 
to see if that ball is already on the white as he's reaching it over. It is confirmed a touchdown, <laughs> so he came back from out of the end zone to catch the ball, does a reverse pivot, pivot, and scores the what touchdown. A play, unbelievable effort by T. Higgins. So now McPherson to tie it up. He nails it, and with 39 seconds left, the Bengals, three straight touchdowns against the stingiest defense in the NFL points-wise since week six, and we have a game tied at 24. One more look on the T. Higgins score. Gene, what'd you see? You know what, Chris? Unbelievable play now. If a, it, When Higgins possesses the football, none of his body part lands in the end zone. He gets no body part in the end zone. Then the football just has to pass inside or over top of the pylon to break the plane to make it a touchdown. Unbelievable play and a great call by the official because we see right there that football crosses over the pylon. You see the nose break the plane of the goal line. Touchdown. The amazing thing, Chris Gene, thank you, is that uh, unbelievable effort by T. Higgins. But when you're watching that, too, Makai Blackman comes running over, and he's pointing, thinking the ball is going to be intercepted. But as T. Higgins is reaching the ball across the goal line, he's just standing there kind of astonished watching him. If he finishes that play and gets all the way over there, he can possibly knock that ball out of T. Higgins' hands. But the unbelievable effort, but also the awareness to know exactly where he was on the field when he caught that pass to reach it across the goal line. McPherson to boot it away, and it's going to be a touchback. So how about the Bengals? Three straight touchdowns, and if this game does go into overtime, Jamar Chase officially questionable with an injured shoulder. So now it's up to his former LSU college teammate Justin Jefferson to catch passes from Nick Mullins. Less than 40 ticks left. You've got your timeouts. Yes. How do you play it if you're Kevin O'Connor? Yes, you got your timeout. So you can throw the ball all over the field. You're going to look to occupy those sidelines, but look to get the ball deep over the middle of the field where Hawkinson comes into play and Jefferson on those deep end cuts and then look for Osborne down the bottom, possibly running deep out routes to get to the sideline and try to fulfill every zone of this Bengals defense. First play, Mullins being pressured and he gets dropped. Trey Hendrickson, he has set a personal career high with 15 sacks and most importantly, drives the Vikings back. A really good job. I've said that Darisaw has held him in check and for the most part he has, but right there, Hendrickson goes up the field and past the quarterback, which is usually a good job by that offensive tackle. Mullins looking to find space. Hendrickson comes away with the sack. And the Bengals have used their first timeout, so now the mentality has shifted to the Cincinnati side of things with it second and 17. They realize right now we have the Vikings backed up. If we can stop them on second and third down, and they punt the ball backed up 15 yards or less towards their own end zone, that'll give Browning a chance to make a play or two and put them in field goal range, especially when you have a kicker like McPherson. Mullins back to throw, dumps it to Chandler. Gets it past the 20, up to the 23, and the Bengals utilize their second timeout. The Vikings right now, it goes from, all right, trying to score and put points on the board and win this game of, you need to make a play now to not give the Bengals an opportunity to get the ball right back in position to be able to kick a field goal to win this game. At 7-6, and six, the Vikings check in currently as the sixth seed, but they have bigger aspirations. They win out, they will be division champs. The Bengals, one of a half dozen teams sitting at 7-6, and six, good enough to be the 10th seed at this point. Don't forget about the Colts and the Steelers coming your way here on NFL Network. Both those teams at 7-6. and six. It's going to be a happy holiday season for some squad out there. Will it be the Bengals or the Vikings? Third and 13, Mullins. Plenty of time. He's going to keep it himself, get down well shy of the first down, and the Bengals utilize their final timeout. Good job by Mullins at least being able to pick up some yards, and that'll allow the punt to go a little bit further. Bengals used their last timeout, and they're hoping to be able, once they get this ball back, 
is going to limit the things that they can do. They're going to have to keep the ball on the sideline. But for Mullins right now, you see this. Where is he supposed to throw the ball? The Bengals have everybody covered on this one. Jefferson's covered. Hawkinson, he has to scramble, and that's better than throwing the ball away because it forced the Bengals to use their last timeout. Once again, Jamar Chase questionable with a shoulder injury, getting looked at in the locker room. We do not know if he will be available for this last drive. Ryan Wright on the punt for just the third time this afternoon. And keep in mind, Charlie Jones is one of only six players to return a punt for a score this year, so he's got that in his bag. Wright gets it away cleanly with the clock ticking. It's not a great punt, and his own man runs into him. Ball's on the ground. A flag is down. Ball is back inside the 20, and the Vikings are arguing that it was his own man that ran into him. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that flag because I thought right there Thompson does a good job of driving the Bengals' own guy into the returner. So that'll be the thing to have to see as we look at this replay on this one to see exactly what they're saying on this penalty. So the Vikings are claiming, as Jones is getting looked at by the medical staff, that a Vikings player was shoved into him. I mean, that was a massive collision. Fair catch called for. Uh, and the Vikings player pushed the Bengal into Jones. Which he's allowed to do. He's out there as a gunner There's being no blocked. There's no foul for kick, kick interference. The defender was blocked into the receiver. Well, it looked to be the opposite. Yes. Where actually Najee Thompson was pushing DJ Turner into Charlie Jones. Really good job by Najee Thompson right there. Of knowing exactly the where he is. Into the receiver. There you go. Yeah, Bill Venevich getting it right right there. An amazing job of forcing that play. And the Bengals are lucky that they're able to get back on that ball right, right. there because Najee Thompson forced him in. That hits a Bengals defender and they're able to get it. Now they're in field goal range. Rules analyst Gene Steratore. That was a wild one, Gene. It sure was, Chris, and a good job by the crew. Look, the back judge throws the flag. The back judge is really not looking at the flyer and the blocking. He's watching the fair catch. He's watching the receiver. So when he just sees this massive collision, he throws his flag. And now you have the deep wing official who is watching that action now come to the back judge. That's mechanically exactly how you're supposed to work it. And now that deep wing comes over and lets him know, look, that's his own player. He was blocked into it, picked the flag up. Great job by the crew. Jake Browning's going to take a knee, so guess what? We've got overtime. What's up with the early window here on Saturday showdown? Last year, the Vikings erased the biggest deficit in NFL history, hit a walk-off game winner, and now Joe Burrow just a spectator in a game that is headed to overtime. And so the news for the Bengals is not good. That's Jamar Chase, done for the day. We saw him head to the locker room earlier, favoring that shoulder. In fact, he doesn't even have it out of his sweatshirt. And you said it earlier. Now we're going into overtime, and they're missing their best player on the offensive side of the ball and Joe Burrow, and now you're adding Jamar Chase to that situation as well. So both of those guys will not be out there. Obviously, we know Joe Burrow, but Jamar Chase is a guy that we said he hasn't had many targets in this game, but he dictates defense. When he's out there, that makes it easier for Jake Browning, the quarterback, to know exactly where they're going with the ball. So we've got our second coin toss of the afternoon. It's A.J. McCarron and C.J. Ham. Great job, gentlemen, so far. We're going to play one modified sudden death period for a maximum of 10 minutes. Both teams will have an opportunity to possess the ball unless there's a defensive score or a touchdown. All right? Fourth quarter timing rules. All replays are upstairs. Both teams have two timeouts. Any questions? Minnesota, you're still the visitors. Tails. You still call tails? It is heads. You want the ball. Which way do you want to kick? Turn around. Cincinnati, we'll see first. Good luck, gentlemen. So Cincinnati, which scored 21 fourth quarter points to tie it, will have the ball first in overtime. With so much on the line here in Cincinnati, we've got overtime. It's one 10-minute period. Game ends if the Bengals score on their opening drive or if the Vikings return it for a score. Bengals only get three. Keep going. It's going to be fun. Part of Triple Header Saturday here on NFL Network.
Colts and Steelers after us. Lions and Broncos to finish it up. Take a look at the playoff picture one more time. The Bengals. Right now, the 10 seed at 7 and 6, so there's a lot of interested parties watching this one. You better believe. And over in the NFC, the Vikings at 7 and 6. They are currently the 6th seed with aspirations of winning the NFC North. Cincinnati once again starts this drive without Jamar Chase. He's in a hoodie with a shoulder injury on the sideline next to his quarterback, Joe Burrow, who's been out the last month following wrist surgery. So up to the former undrafted player, Jake Browning. And on first down, flushed, chased, and gets close to the line of scrimmage. Daniil Hunter all over it. Browning got that ball. He was looking to go right back to T. Higgins, and the Vikings did a really good job of covering him up. As we look at Jamar Chase on the sideline right now, for this Bengals offense, T. Higgins has been the guy that has stepped up. you got to try to find a way to get him the ball, and it's even tougher without Jamar Chase taking coverage and double teams to his side and opening it up for the other guys. Bengals, they'll face winning teams the rest of the way after the Vikings. They're at Pittsburgh, at Kansas City, and home against Cleveland. Pump fake, Browning gets dropped. It's Jonathan Bullard injured earlier in the game with a big sack for Minnesota. For the Vikings, when you make a play like that on defense on second down, and now you're forcing a third and long right here, going to be a third and 18. This opens up. This is the Bengals' possession. So now if you force a pump from backed up, you only need a few plays, and you can kick a field goal in this game and possibly walk away and win it. So now if you're Cincinnati, it's third and 18 after Minnesota's fifth sack of the day. Watch Higgins split out to the right. Browning pressured again, gets away from a defender, keeps the play alive, throws it deep downfield to Higgins, who doesn't make the catch, and no flag on the play. Evans there to knock it away. A lot of contact on that play. The Bengals sideline is going absolutely nuts. Zach Taylor is almost on the field. As we see, the play breaks down. T. Higgins goes deep. Evans has his jersey, turns around. I said it earlier. They've been letting them play. We haven't seen any penalties down the field on pass coverage. Chris, I think that's a pass interference. He has his jersey in his left hand. He's all over him. I think that's a pass interference. So no call by the refereeing crew. And with eight and a half to go in overtime, Robbins punts it away. Brandon Powell retreats inside his 30. Cuts it upside and into the middle and past the 35. The last time these two teams played the season opener, the 2021 season, and boy, it was memorable. Greg Joseph booming a 53-yarder to force overtime. In the extra session, Dalvin Cook coughs it up. And Cincinnati, Evan McPherson in his first game as a pro, nails the walk-off as time expired. How will it play out this afternoon here in week 15 of the 2023 season with so much on the line? Greg Joseph's season long is 54, his career high, 61 yards. Mullins, play fake, works the middle of the field. Hawkinson goes up, almost like grabbing the rebound and gets the first down. Exactly what it was like. Him maxed up right there on Hill, and he's able to take the bump by Pratt over the middle. That's where he's done all of his work today, and Mullins finds him. Bengals going man-to-man, -man, and they like that matchup of Hawkinson against any safety in the league, throwing it up where only he can go and grab it. Ty Chandler having a career afternoon is lined up behind Mullins. It is Chandler, and the Bengals stuff him for no gain. Miles Murphy having the best game of his young career. Teams up with Jermaine Pratt on the stop. Really good job by that Bengals defensive front of using their hands to shed blockers 
and get there and be able to tackle him before he's able to pick up any real yards. Vikings going to go back to the pass right here for the Bengals. Come with pressure and force Mullins to have to make a quick decision. That's when he's got a little ahead of himself and gave him opportunities to make plays on the ball. Second and nine. Mullins swings it out to Hawkinson. Dives close to the first down. Looks like he's going to be less than a yard shy. So now on third and less than a yard, the Vikings are going hurry up. They're going right to the line on this. Mullins gets the snap, pushes forward, and there was a timeout by Cincinnati first. First short timeout. Good job by the Bengals because they were not ready for that one. Weren't ready at all, and that was a smart call by O'Connell by Nick Mullins. As soon as Hawkinson goes up over the top, Mullins is looking to the sideline to get him and get him going to get right back on the ball. And right now, we talked about it. There's a strategy in overtime where sometimes you win that toss and you go on defense. It didn't happen this time, but for the Vikings, you get a stop. Now they're very close to that target line for Greg Joseph to be able to kick a field goal through. So now being able to pick up this first down will allow them a few more shots to get a few more yards and to be able to kick a game-winning field goal. You saw Joseph warming up. It would be about a 59-yarder right now. Season best is 54, career best is 61. Third and inches for Mullins. That's Powell behind him. They get a push. I don't know. He got turned sideways. Where's that football? As we all know, the yellow line is not official. So where is that going to be spotted? And th this one's going to be a measurement. Wow. Really close, and I don't like the idea of having Powell, one of the smallest guys on the offense, be the one to try to push Nick Mullins ahead for the first down. Let's get one of those bigger guys, one of those big tight ends in there to try to push our quarterback ahead. Yeah, Powell listed at 5'8", 181. Maybe C.J. Ham next time. So now it is, the measurement is coming. They have it marked as a fourth down right now, but let's see what the sticks say. And it is indeed fourth down by that much. So, Coach, what do you do? I'm going for it. I'm going to hand the ball off to Ty Chandler and allow him an opportunity to pick up this first down. You say you want to give a chance. You said a 59-yard field goal. I'm trusting in my offensive line and these guys to be able to pick it up. And as you can see, the Vikings this year, perfect on fourth and one this season. So much on the line for Zach Taylor and the Bengals. Two-time defending champions to the AFC North and playing for their postseason lives. The Vikings, currently the sixth seed in the NFC. Part of fantastic triple header action coming your way on NFL Network. Mullins with Chandler in the backfield. And it's Powell again. And Mullins does not get there. A second shove doesn't get it done. Does not get it done. And they go to the same exact play. He looks short on that play. But we have to see exactly where they're going to put the ball on this one and possibly get another measurement. The Bengals are saying, no way. We're waiting for a referee's call. And it certainly looks like that ball barely made it back to the line of scrimmage, if anything. But why not give it to your, your big guys? Ty Chandler's done an amazing job today. Still waiting on an official call. But Powell again, 181 yards. It looked like Mullins actually bobbled the ball. The Bengals did a really good job of just pushing them back. They're able to push Bradbury back on the snap. And Mullins didn't have minute, much space to be able to get anywhere when he got the ball in his hands. The crowd will tell you. Lou Anaruma 
Burrow fired up. His defense comes through as Mullins bobbled the ball and then didn't get much of a push from the 181-pound Powell. Lost a half a yard on that, and I think he bobbles the ball because Bradbury, once he snaps, it was a clean snap, but he's getting pushed backwards, and that forces him to bobble that. They had no chance at picking that one up. That was an amazing surge by that Bengals defensive line to knock them backwards and lose yards on fourth and inches. Well, people are going to be questioning the third and fourth down play calls of Kevin O'Connell on that one. Cincinnati back in business. Next score wins. Bengals once again playing without Jamar Chase. Injured shoulder. They'll run it. Mixon, not much there. And if you're thinking about Evan McPherson, so many heroic kicks in just a three-year career. His season-long 56. Well, here we go, Chris. Jake Browning has the ball, opportunity to be the hero right here. Make the plays. Yoshi Bosch in the slot. You got T. Higgins down the bottom, one-on-one. -on -one. Read it off of Higgins. If he has one-on-one -on -one coverage, give him the ball and allow him an opportunity to make a play. Browning over the middle, and it was behind Yoshi Bosch. That was dangerous territory for the Bengals. Third and nine. This is a huge opportunity. And for the Bengals right now, you realize, you tell Jake Browning, hey, let's try to make the play to pick up the first down, but no critical mistakes because if they're punt the ball, they'll back Minnesota up right now. I would expect Flo, I've said it before, to come with some form of a pressure, but also put a safety over top of T. Higgins. I think for Jake Browning, read that. If he's a double team, go to Tyler Boyd on the opposite side and see if you can find your slot receiver. Higgins at the bottom of your screen on third and nine. Browning, the Vikings with some pressure. Browning flush, throws it downfield. The ball's caught by Boyd. Keeps his footing inside the 30. Cuts inside the 20, the 15. And the Bengals have the ball down to the 12-yard line. Jake Browning giving some words of encouragement to his former college teammate, Byron Murphy but he just ripped the Vikings' heart out. Tyler Boyd working inside. He's open, but he doesn't see him. Keeps working his way all the way across the field. Makes the play, makes the catch, but what he does after he gets the catch to drive them all the way in field goal range, stacking it on top of each other, making a play to put his team in position to win this game. Ball at the Minnesota 13, and a timeout called by Cincinnati. No timeout, Cincinnati. And a despondent Nick Mullins wondering what if. As for Browning, a huge third down conversion, keeping the play alive with his legs. And I said it, a double team on T. Higgins down here at the bottom. Two defenders on him. Go back to Boyd up top, who's working his way across the field and finds that open space. A really good job by Jake Browning. Not panicking as he got outside the pocket, opening his vision and being able to find Tyler Boyd to put his team in position to now run the ball one or two times and then give it to McPherson to win this one. So the Bengals out of timeouts now in overtime. They've used both of theirs. Mixon off the left side. Spin move up to the nine. And so now at what point do you kick it? Third down maybe? Third down because you, you do it on third down in the event that there's a bobble snap or whatever may happen. You can just fall on the ball and line back up again and do it on fourth down. Hand the ball off to Mixon again. Who knows? Maybe he breaks one and he's able to run it into the end zone and win the game that way. Yeah. Monday. Monday. I'll give you a little present. Under four minutes to go in overtime. And it's just going to be a knee as Browning centers it up. And here comes McPherson. Five walk-off kicks as a rookie, including one against these Vikings.
And if you're Kevin O'Connell, you trying to ice him on not a chilly day in Cincinnati. <laughs> you got timeouts, you might as well use them. It's officially a 29-yard attempt. The snap's good, the hold is good, and the Bengals have come back to beat the Vikings in overtime. He may not be Joe Burrow, but a different JB is making his name here in the Queen City. It wasn't always pretty for him today, especially in the first half. But he just continues to fight, and he continued in this second half to go play after play. Three straight drives, putting up 21 straight points to put his team back in this ball game. They forced overtime, not able to do anything on the first drive. One play, getting outside the pocket, getting it to Tyler Boyd, putting him in position, and McPherson does the rest. I don't think there was ever a doubt on that Bengals sideline that he was putting that ball through the uprights, and they were walking away with the victory. For just the fifth time in 155 times, the Bengals, when trailing by 14 or more points entering the fourth quarter, they have come back to win the game. What a start of a day here on NFL Network.